So this is the Daytona National Reptile Breeders Expo here in Daytona, Florida. One of the things that I love about this expo is just all the diversity of reptiles and amphibians, and that includes some of the coolest, most cutting edge turtle and tortoise morphs. So in this bonus video, I'm gonna once again tour the Daytona National Reptile Breeders Expo and show you guys some of the most cutting edge and incredible turtle and tortoise morphs. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. So Mark from the Turtle Source, good to see you again. How Thanks. long has it been since I was out at your place doing a video? Like two, three years. Two, three think, years. Yeah, yeah. You have the best turtles at this show, hands down. Thanks, Dave. We're gonna see some of them. What have we got here? These are baby ornate box turtles. Okay, those are just adorable. Just gorgeous. They only get about five inches when they get to be adults. They're really cool turtles, super personalities. And so with these guys, you know, these don't get very big. Mm -mm. They don't need an aquatic setup because they are box turtles. Mm -hmm. I think that box turtles should get a lot more love than they actually get. Yeah, these have been favorite pet turtles for literally like two centuries in America. But it's pretty cool. I mean, everybody's had a pet box turtle and they're pretty much all over the country and they've just been, because they are amazing pets. Yeah. The people used to paint them a lot and think that was cool. Now we know better. Now we know it's not healthy for them. Right. But people used to do that all the time, put their names on them and everything. So a lot of times you would find turtles in the wild that had it or crossing the road that had paint on it but they're just awesome awesome pets they're like little dogs they have personalities they get along with everything they even will chase your kitten around or, or what have you and they'll eat everything they're on the board so they eat everything and they're just awesome awesome pet turtles how many of these did you produce uh we only brought five um we hatch about two dozen a year two dozen a year mm -hmm. over here we've got chinese big-headed turtles which I don't think anybody else has these here. No, these are these are pretty unique, even to this show, which everything's at this show. But we have these guys here. I got these as little hatchlings from a good friend of mine. And um, I thought I would just raise them up and, um, and part with them, but I really couldn't. So, <laughs> Look at so this these. is kind of what a lot of the Japanese monster movies were fashioned after. That's right. And that whole Gamera and all that stuff where they would spin upside down. But they're, and they, they do have a big bite, but they're not real aggressive. They don't want to fight with you. In fact, they've been so mild-mannered, they haven't bit at anybody. And they're just really cool turtles. They're a cold weather turtle from Northern China and other countries nearby. And they're just awesome turtles. And they've got this big long tail. They kind of occupy that same ecological niche as say like a snapping turtle would in the US. And they've got the big biting head mostly to crush crustaceans and mollusks, but sure. just a beautiful, beautiful turtle. Yeah, so I, let's hold that shell under the light because oh, yeah. that is not like our snapping turtle shells. No, not at all. And they don't smell like our snapping turtle shells. Yeah, that's either. good. But they do have a mouth and they can bite, but they, they'd rather not. They do have to defend themselves, so it makes sense. Wow. Just a cool turtle all around. We have two big females. And, uh, and now, not a lot of people are working with these in the country. No, not really. Not really. I can only think of a couple. And how much uh, are these here? Eight ninety nine. These guys are nine thousand dollars, and people have complained that we're not asking enough for them. But to be to be honest, I have two big females. I kind of don't really want to sell them. Kind of just want to put sure. a male with them, so I can find a male that'll be babies here in a year or two. Wow, nine thousand dollar turtle right there, and, and not overpriced. Okay, that is something special. These babies are really cool. They either hatch out green or peach colored. I took one of each figure and maybe I get a pair, but no, they're both girls. And how big do these guys get? Another two inches. Another two inches. That's it. That's all so it. that's it? That's it. So yeah. they're not giants? Nope. It's not big. They, they walk in clear rocky mountain streams in the, in the mountains of China. Wow. Are there any left in China? They're not functionally extinct, but they're getting close. Yeah. yeah so they're very protected and you can't import or export them, um, but they can definitely go all around the U.S. Wow. Just a neat turtle. Yeah. Real personable. And um, they are pretty much trained to whatever falls in their cage is food. Right. What else would you like to see, Dave? Uh, so you work with a lot of red-eared slider morphs. Yes. And I think you probably work with more red-eared slider morphs than anybody else. Mm -hmm. And so let's see some of these guys. Well, first of all, let's make a pit stop because I see albino southern river cooters, which are extremely rare. Yeah. Let's see one of these guys. So this is something new. Um, this was just developed uh, about, let me see if I can find a pretty one here. Yeah. Um, this was developed about six years ago. 
The famous breeder Clive Longden developed these, and he's run with it ever since. And these are his stock, and they've got some really pretty colors on them. Wow. And um, they're just a river cooter that is pure albino. So you can see the colors on the shells. And now these get big. Southern River Cooters get almost placemat size, about 11, 12 inches pretty easily. They're big and beautiful. They make awesome uh, garden pond turtles because they do get so big and it's sure. predator proof. And then the unique thing about this morph as opposed to most other morphs is they do have a very, very bright red coloration around the eye. Almost looks irritated, but when you look close and you realize they all have it. Right. It's a very unique characteristic to this trait. They have that bright, bright red around the eyes. And they are a real pretty turtle, whether they're babies or big adults or in your ponds or in a tank. Um, these are three-year-olds here, and they are just an awesome turtle. And going to be very common soon. The prices will come down as they get more commonplace, more people producing them. Sure, and so, right now these are 2,000 each. They are, and, uh, and they do pretty well at that. We've sold a few. And um, if you only need a pair to get started with. Yeah, absolutely. You know, what does the plastron look like? Oh, look at that. Yeah. Wow. See those. These are beautiful. And again, the eyes are, are pretty unmistakable. All right, I'm loving these guys. Okay, let's see. All right, so now we're going to go on to the red-eared slider morphs. So red ears, we do a lot with a, a morph we call the paradox. And the paradox is a dominant gene, which means it doesn't have to breed with another paradox to produce paradox. And they're red ears, so they're very compatible with, with similar species. Um, I'll just pick out a favorite sure. line here. Oh yeah. That this is just the red ear, but it, look it's, at that. And the paradox can come out any which way. And the neat thing about these is a friend of mine is a ball python breeder and a geneticist. And he said, look, it's a dominant gene, but it's a faulty gene. And what's happening is the gene is trying to correct itself and it's trying to make normal, healthy green turtles. And it fails a lot. And every time it fails, you make money. And every time it succeeds, you get a green turtle. <laughs> this is not a green turtle. Look at the markings on it. You can yeah. see the markings on the feet. And just the shell is like nothing else. There are no red ears like that in the world. And yet, the paradox come out like that. And once they get a little bit past hatching size, they start to develop their own their own coloration. Yeah, and yeah. They're very unique. And they, a lot of them have black blotches all over them. Some have all over the shell. Some of them are albino. Some are green. The coolest ones are like a bright yellow and they have some green, normal green coloration in the shell. And that's really highly sought after. Here's hatchlings. And a lot of them come out like this. And this is what happens after a few months where they start to get the colors. So you can, you can see that when they're starting to color in. Just like the one we just showed you. Yeah, yeah. And a lot of them come out in a lime coloration. Kind of like a lime albino, but not really. I mean, look at the different shades yeah. of green you get out of the limes. It's the sky's the limit with the colors. I mean, anything goes. So there's all these different greens, and they're not normal green turtles. They're very different. Some have albino eyes, some have black eyes. We've counted 26 different varieties that are prevalent and keep repeating, but there's other new stuff popping up all the time. Sure. So we have different names for them, like the camouflage or albino or lime albino. And it's just, it's a limitless morph. And so a lot of people jumped on it recently because they realize like everybody in China did because they realized you can produce whatever you want. Like Absolutely. Well, that's the beauty of Paradox is that they're snowflakes. It is. It is. And like I said, it's a dominant gene, but so you only need one to, to make a Paradox. Right. Now, the Golden Flames I saw at your place when I, when I was over there doing the turtle video with you, mm -hmm. and these are just jaw dropping. Mm -hmm. And it brightens up. It really does. It brightens up so well. And it almost looks like it's got a battery in it, something that's so bright. So here you can see a three year old. And then here's a normal one. And then here's a yellow version. So these were just developed from one breeder who took really bright Florida red bellies, had a lot of red, and just keep putting them together, putting them together, putting them together. Now they kind of come out somewhat bright, a little bright, and then very bright, and yet you can breed any of the three colors together, which they call wing, regular golden flame, and super golden flames, and you'll get any of the three. There's no putting the, the prettiest ones to get the prettiest ones. It just comes out how they come out. So they look like that, the babies look like this, and that's that's a really, really bright little turtle. And for a long time, these were $5,000 a piece. Yeah, I remember that. Of course, now not so much. So a lot more real reasonable prices. These are uh, two thousand now. For this size. For that size, yeah. it's two thousand. Oh, they used to be five thousand for hatchlings. And right, right. Yeah, yeah. Wow, Mark, it is always great to see you at these expos. Always great to see your turtles. 
you are not only a pioneer with turtle breeding, but you do really produce some of the best turtles out there. Thanks, Dave. We, we hatched gibbas about a month and a half ago. That's our 132nd species or more. Oh, wow. That we're working with right now. We're working on about six or eight more, so. That's we're fantastic. We're gonna do 132 now. Let's see how it turns out. That's fantastic. Well, one of these days, I'm gonna be in your neighborhood and we're gonna do a follow-up video. Come back again. Sounds good. good Thank you, my man. Good to see you, bud. Thanks, Dave. Good seeing you. All right, so I've known this dude since 2008, and now Dave's a customer. That's right. And a friend. That's right. And an awesome dude. That's and he has this glorious mane of hair. And I Dave do. loves Shippy Reptiles. Yes. Because and with the amount of money that I save on using Shippy Reptiles, I can afford some really nice shampoo. So for all your reptile shipping needs, visit ShippyReptiles.com or visit the link in the description below. Sorry, they don't sell shampoo. All right, so this is Gabby. Hi. And you're going to show us the three coolest turtles that you've got. Yes. What do we have here? This is a Zambezi flap shell turtle right here. Zambezi flap shell. Yes. So they kind of look like soft shells. Yes, absolutely. And where are these from? I, wait, don't tell me. Zambezi, right? <laughs> Zambezi, yeah. Yes. They're from yes. Zambezi. Yes. How, how would you guess that? <laughs> well... Does I'm, the name give I, it off to all I, of the I turtles? keep telling people I'm pretty smart. <laughs> yeah. And one of these days, somebody will believe me. Yeah. But this is one of, our, uh, one of our best turtles for sure. That guy is cute. Now, how big do these guys get? Um, I would say about this big. That's big? Yes. I mean, average turtle size for most. So, soft shell turtles are found all over the world. We have multiple species here in the United States, but this is what you'd find in Zambezi. And I just, you know, I love soft shells because they are so unique amongst turtles. Absolutely. So, of the flap shell species, we would say these ones are the most personal. They have big personalities. And they're just, they're great out of all of the flap shells to have. I agree. Yeah. But right underneath us, right here, we've got Indian tent turtles, which are, I think, one of the coolest turtles out there. Let's see one of these. All right, look at this guy. Yes. I mean, obviously, this guy has a lot of character in that shell. We've got that red circle and those knobs. This is such a cool turtle. Yes. Oh, and look at that. Yep. We've got a pink belly. Mm -hmm. And the good thing about these ones, these turtles actually, they keep their humps as they age. Most turtles don't keep them, but these guys absolutely do. And they keep their color too. Wow. Yeah. Do we have any adults of these? We do not have any adults at our show with us. So they keep that red outline around their shell all the way into adulthood. So yes. they really don't go through a lot of color changes as they age. Mm -hmm. But look at those knobs. I love yes. those knobs. The knobs are what catches people's eyes the most. Yeah, it's like a shark fin. Yes, very pretty, very great colors for turtles. So these turtles are not very cold cold tolerant, but they're good for Florida. Yes, good right. Florida species. So that's why we don't see a lot of these in Minnesota. Yes, no, yeah. no Minnesotan turtles No right Minnesota, here. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so that's a cool one. We also have everybody's dream tortoise here. And that's these guys. All right, so right over here, we've got Galapagos tortoises. Galapagos tortoises. And the difference between these two is two years. Big size difference. So one of the cool things about Galapagos tortoises is that when they're born, uh, they actually have white outlines or like white circles yes. in their scoots. And that doesn't last very long. So you can see that there's kind of like this outline of blotches. And when these guys come out of the shell, that is like bleach white. And it starts to dissipate as the tortoise gets older. So how many of these guys do you produce in a year? A lot. A yeah. lot. Okay, I like we, that answer. Um, this tank is all this year's hatchlings. So about this, give or take a little more. Okay, gotcha. So what do we got? 20, Maybe 20-ish like in there? 14 to 18. 18. 18. 18. I was, yeah. Wow, I was Just closer than I thought. <laughs> now, do we have a big one to, to we see? We do have a bigger Let's one. Let's see the big one. Yeah. All right, so over here on this side, we've got this dude. And how old is this one? He is about four to five. Four to five years yeah. old. So they do grow. I mean, I'll just put my hand there for scale. Yes. I mean, they do grow pretty fast and they do grow pretty big. Yes, very big. <laughs> and so now I see a sign over there that says Florida sales, sales only. only. Yes. And what is the reason for that? It is only specifically because they are an endangered species. Correct. Yes, that is 
FWC's reason for they cannot go over Florida lines. They cannot go over Florida yes. lines. Yes, I know they can. They can. Yes, they can't be sold over Florida lines. Gotcha. Yeah. So as a gift, I can gift you a toy. You can gift me can one, gift but I can't. Be uh, sold. Yes. Really? Yes. Now that is just a silly little law. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's what everybody says. <laughs> Yep. Oh wow. Yeah. We know a lot of people who have them in Arizona and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Jerry Fife has these and yes. yeah, there's yeah. a lot in Arizona. Yeah. But you can't sell Jerry one in Arizona if it was born and hatched here in Florida. You have to have a valid Florida ID. Yep. Wow. Yep, we, we, I, I feed plenty of people. We actually sold one of our uh, tortoises today, uh, yesterday and we had to ID, ID a bunch of people. Really? Yep. Wow. And what age do we know if they're male or female? like a vet and have them probed or something like that I'm sure they most definitely could um, one of the ways that like we kind of do it just for like haha -ha, so fun um, the males tend to fight so when they hit a certain size you'll see two males out there with their necks all stretched yeah, yeah. out and their heads you know they're biting at each other they're clearly fighting so that way we kind of like look at those oh, you're probably gonna be a male gotcha but other than that, you really don't know until they're like full blown adults. Gotcha. Wow. These are absolutely like one of my favorite tortoises. Such a cool dude. All right, well, both of you, thank you so much for showing off your turtles here. <laughs> so one of the things that I really enjoy about the Daytona Reptile Breeders Expo is the diversity in reptiles that you're gonna see at an expo like this, and that definitely includes the turtle morphs. As you just saw, there are tons of really awesome turtle morphs here. So guys, keep in mind that every other Tuesday, you're gonna find bonus videos just like this. So as always, thanks for watching, and until the next reptile adventure, love the planet, feed your reptile obsession, and rattle on.